Hey, what's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well during these sort of times where we have this crazy virus going on and we have riots going on across the world, or I should say protests rather than riots, there should be protests anyway. Um, pretty crazy right now to live in the world that we're living in at the moment. I just hope you're all doing well and I hope you're all keeping safe. Um, today's video is going to be one that when you get back into traveling, if you're traveling, um, 15 travel hacks that you know, might help you out. Some of these you're gonna know, I'm sure. Others, hopefully, not so much, so you can watch this video and actually get something from it. Uh, we're gonna go straight into it, try not to make this video as long as my previous one, because that was uh, about half an hour long, way too long to have a video. Um, in it, number one is going to be taking an empty water bottle through security. Um, so if you have like a big water bottle, like this one, for example, then uh, if it's full of water, you can't take it through, because you have to have 100 mil or less. So um, I've done it a few times where you take through an empty water bottle and it's fine because there's no liquid. Then when you get in on the other side, there's either going to be a water fountain or a shop or somewhere. You can go up to the bar, go to McDonald's, wherever it might be, and you ask them nicely and generally they'll say, yeah, sure, and they'll fill it up for you at the tap or whatever, and there you go, you've got water. You don't have to pay two, three, four pound or whatever for a bottle of water at the airport because, you know, if you don't have to pay for it, then why would you? I've done it a couple of times and all I'd recommend is just don't fill it up in like the toilet tap water or something because the majority of countries around the world, unless you're in somewhere like Germany or Denmark, majority of the tap water and like taps and stuff aren't going to be that clean um, and you know, you could just catch something um, you know that you don't want so just keep it clean, go to like a restaurant or a bar or something, I'm sure they'll be happy enough to fill it up for you. Um, the number two slot, again, I've done this a couple of times, is using the USB slot in the back of the TV at the hotel. So unless you get a really cheap hotel or somewhere where the TV is just one of those old school fat TVs, um, if you've got like a modern TV in a, you know, in a fairly nice hotel or whatever, uh, definitely look on the back for the USB sticks or the sticks, the USB slots. Um, so that, you know, if you forgot to bring your portable charger to charge your phone, or if you forgot to bring uh, the adapter, you know, whatever it might be, if you need to charge up your phone or whatever via that USB uh, wire, go into the back of the TV. If it works, it works. Um, again, I've done it multiple times uh, and it works just fine. So, you know, if you need to do it, then look at the back of the TV. Uh, you might just find one or two of those uh, USB slots. In a number three is a very similar thing to number two. Uh, portable phone chargers, so it's just like a little power bank that you can carry around with you in your hand. Fit in your pocket or they can go into your backpack, whatever it might be. Uh, very useful, again, they can charge your phone, they can charge like, obviously anything that will power through, like a wall plug socket or whatever, do it via USB. As long as it charges via that wire, that USB wire, then you're all good. Um, and yeah, you can just carry on. If your phone's almost dead, plug it in and charge it up and you can go on Google Maps, whatever, and you can find your way around wherever you are. Uh, pretty useful one, I use it almost everywhere I go because my batteries do always die so this is quite useful to have with me. Uh, in a number four if you go to um, anywhere that requires you to take like a big case that you have to put under the plane if you mark it as fragile whether with fragile tape or whether it's whatever as long as it's clear enough for them to see then they'll take a little bit more care with your case believe it or not uh, because airliners tend to just chuck on everywhere and people tend to get like things broken um, you know, just put fragile tape around it and another thing that will mean as well, they'll put it at the top of the pile so that it doesn't get squashed if it's fragile, um, which means that when it comes off the conveyor belt after you've landed your flight, it comes off onto that conveyor belt first because it's on the top of the pile, they put it onto the trolley and it just goes onto the conveyor belt first. Sometimes you'll be waiting at those conveyor belts for like an hour or something if it's really just being delayed, uh, which I've experienced myself. Um, but by the time they start bringing the cases out, yours should be one of the first. So marking it as fragile can have its benefits. Um, yeah, just remember it if you ever go somewhere with the main main case. In the number five is changing your phone time to the destination's time. So what this is meant to do is help you with jet lag because your brain still sort of thinks in the time that your phone is in. So if you go somewhere that's like five hours or six hours ahead of yours, by the time you land there, you're still thinking that it's 12 o'clock when actually it's 6 o'clock or whatever it might be. If you change it before your flight at some point, you keep on looking at your phone because it's just a natural human thing that we do now, is checking our phone all the time. Your brain will slowly recognize that that's the time that you should be looking at. 
um, potentially even having a little sleep on the plane, making your brain think it's a little bit later than it actually is. By the time you land, it's just a little bit easier getting into that time zone. It's not a, an immediate like, oh, you're in this time zone, deal with it. Um, yeah, it just helps ease you, eases yourself and your brain into that time zone a bit more. And I've never done it, but apparently it does help with the jet lag a little bit as well. In number six is an app called Flightboard. Essentially, if you're in a rush, maybe, and you're getting to the airport late, uh, you don't have time to get into the airport and then look up all the boards that are around the airport. Oh, where's my flight? Oh, it's there. Now, what gates? What, what's the gate info? Whatever it might be. Uh, instead of doing all that, you can have a mobile app called Flightboard. Go on there, and it'll tell you all that before you get to the airport. Obviously, if the information is released, it's at the same time as the Flightboard. I don't know. It's like a very situational thing, I know. Um, but like if you're at the airport and you can't find those boards or if they're really busy and you don't want to get into the crowd of people to have a look at the board and you just don't want to get in their way, just go on the phone app and it should use off your GPS data, um, you know, your location, where you are and therefore you're at this airport so you want to know this information for all of these flights. Um, yeah, just find your flight and yeah, you're all good to go without having to get up and find one of those boards. In the number seven is something I used to do a lot with like festivals and big crowds and stuff. It's uh, basically to protect your wallet or purse with a chain. So you just use a chain, put it onto your uh, hook where uh, you put your belt through, put it in your pocket onto your wallet. If someone was to try and grab it, like pickpocket, it only gets like this far, then all of a sudden like they can't yank it anymore because of the chain. So then obviously that will probably deter the pickpocket and a runoff. Luckily, I've never had someone try to pickpocket me, but if they were to try to with a chain, then um, they wouldn't get far. I don't really use that nowadays. I sort of take that risk a little bit, but if I was to go somewhere that I knew was like a higher risk pickpocket area, I know Spain has a lot of pickpockets, for example, um, then I would probably consider using it or even using like a fanny pack or something that's just a little bit safer than your pockets. Um, yeah, just to protect yourself. In number eight is getting a local SIM card. So for some people, their SIM card might work for like all of Europe, like mine does. So I can use my 3G or 4G or whatever for the whole of Europe, and that's fine. The second I step out of Europe and I go to the US or Asia or whatever, uh, my 4G doesn't work. My calls don't work. I have to use it on like Wi-Fi. I have to go to a cafe or whatever to use Wi-Fi, which can be a pain. So um, getting a local SIM card in whatever country you're in, um, you know, that can basically bypass that, get a different SIM card, you'll have a different number for where you are at that time, um, but what it means is you can use uh, the local data, local 4G, um, and hopefully it'll be good 4G, some countries are a bit naff, others are, or should be really good, so, you know, getting a local SIM card if you're in somewhere for a good three weeks, four weeks, or even longer than that, it's really worth it. If you're only there for a few days, it might not be worth it so much, but definitely if you're there for a long period of time, really worth it. Uh, never done it myself, but definitely will do in the future if I ever go somewhere for a long period of time. In the number nine, uh, apps similar to Foursquare and Wi-Fi maps. So basically what those apps are, are apps where uh, any little cafe or shop or McDonald's or anything with a password that might have a lock on it, um, you go on the app and it will tell you in the place that you're in what the password is for that password lock, whatever. If the password is like public, if it's been given out before, um, it won't just give you passwords for every single Wi-Fi hotspot that you'll need, but definitely if it's one that's available to the public, but they want to make sure that it's only available for the people eating in the cafe. Uh, so they have to ask or they have to look at the wall to say that our password is. Uh, rather than asking people, just go on the app, and if it's there available, it should be on the app as well. Never used it myself personally, um, but I, I get the premise of it, and it's a pretty useful thing that I think I'm going to be using in the future if I ever need Wi-Fi. Again, in Europe, it's not an issue for me, but outside of Europe, it's definitely something that I could use uh, a lot of. In a number 10 is using a carrier bag and bin liner for in your bag. So if it rains, uh, basically your gear is protected. For someone like me, I carry around a lot of like electrics, my camera, my laptop, my drone, etc. Things that are like easily destroyable by water. Um, so just by using a carrier bag at the top, carrier bag, use a zip on the bag at the top. It just protects your stuff if it rains and if it goes through the bag and um, you know, you haven't damaged like thousands of pounds worth of gear or however much it's all worth. So you may be lucky enough to live in the UK or even the US in certain parts, I guess, um, 
where you can just drink water out the tap and it's perfectly safe but not everywhere is like that there's definitely a lot more of the world where the drinking water is unsafe i say the tap water not drinking whatever where the tap water is unsafe and you can't really drink it without catching a disease because it's different to what you used to etc um there are different water purification systems similar to like a, a, a system called life straw uh which i saw basically you just stick it in the drink suck through the straw it does something in the middle purifies the water and then um and then it's clean water for you to drink i definitely would use it and i would look into something like that if i was going somewhere like india or like just a third world country you know obviously where you know the drinking water or the tap water just isn't as you know it because if if you drink something that's uh you know not going to go right with your body uh, you can get all sorts of diseases or just like feel ill it can ruin your holiday um so definitely like if i was to ever do something like that or go somewhere like that um i would probably look at a purification system if i wasn't buying bottled water next two are quite similar first one so number 12 is going to be downloading google maps for offline it just means that you can use google maps offline without having to use 4g uh quite useful again if you're in somewhere that you don't have access to 4g or uh, wi-fi or whatever um, google maps offline means you can like go from a to b without having to mess around trying to like remember where you're going or whatever or even trying to find a hotspot or whatever um yeah downloading google maps offline is really useful just for knowing your bearings if you're good with coordination and then number 13 is google translate for offline so again google translate is really advanced now it's not perfect with the translation but you can use it for like all sorts of different things or menus or whatever and you now have a camera option so you can look at a menu camera option download it offline and it will translate in real time for you um you know like what these words mean on your phone it's a really cool thing you should really try it out on google translate i do it quite often as well just to see what different things say in other languages because it's always interesting for me i quite like languages so that type of thing really interests me um yeah google translate offline is a really useful thing and it only takes up like megabytes worth of information in a number 14 is more of like a, a faster way to get through airports really airliner apps you get e-tickets so rather than having to go to the airport queue up get your physical ticket where you can rip it bend it rip it at the rippable seam whatever it might be those tickets are cool and everything and it's nice for a little souvenir um but if you're going somewhere and you have like an airliner app that you can get like the app online not only can you check in online so you don't have to queue up and check in in person um, but also like it's just a lot quicker you can literally get in the airport go to the searches get through all that and then you're done it's a thing on your phone a little qr code you scan it through and you're all good to go uh not much more to it just uh check next time you fly does your airliner have uh an app and then do, can you check in on the app for an e-ticket rather than uh you know a ticket a physical ticket just make sure that your phone has enough battery that you can get through the airport without running out of battery because that then could probably cause issues um but then that goes back to having a portable charger where it can charge up your phone and the last one is more of a tip than a hack i will admit um maybe you can class it as a hack i don't know taking headphones to block out annoying noises so if you're on a plane crying babies are happening or people complaining because they want to sit in another seat over there whatever it might be um just make sure you take a good pair of headphones i say in a lot of my vlogs and you'll notice i take beats with me in a lot of my vlogs uh just a, a good pair of headphones which are noise cancelling um that's why i use them nothing else to it um yeah i enjoy that and sometimes you just want to be on your own you just want to appreciate the music and do whatever so take a good pair of headphones make sure that they can noise cancel even cancel the noise of the plane because planes have quite a loud noise um babies are normally on the plane they're annoying as well uh, just anything else you know if you know it's going to uh, be boring as well it's it's just good to um pass the time get through a flight oh it's two hours long then you put on this playlist that's two hours long by the time we get to the last song we've landed and then we can get on with the day so that is 15 travel hacks right there um yeah if you've got any travel hacks or if you want to see more travel hacks from me because i'm sure there's going to be more if i do more research let me know down in the comment section below like i said half of these i've used myself the other half i've sort of done like research or just picked up along the way um yeah if you want to see more videos like this tips tricks hacks whatever it might be uh let me know because at the moment i can't really do much vlogging although i do have some ideas i might uh veer into doing in the travel vlogging style so um yeah i mean 
keep up to date with that if you're new around here make sure to subscribe for more videos if you like this video please go ahead and like it yeah stay safe and i'll catch all you guys in the next video thank you for watching and i'll catch you in the next one peace out